All right, we've moved some shoulder blades or some shoulder feathers over to the other side. And now we're almost ready to, to flatten this image together or merge it together. We're not gonna flatten this. We don't wanna lose all our component layers so that we can clean up the outside in one nice clean layer. I wanna work on these feathers just a little bit more. They're pretty weird. And I know there's good quality information behind them. But once I merge, all of that will get lost and replaced by whatever pixels are on top. And sometimes I'll just do a little internal compositing like this. Just take that whole top of the feather. And then just move it. And I can always warp it, skew it, twist it, bop it. Okay, now that's an internal transition I can work with. We can still dodge and burn and kind of fix little things. <clears throat> but I'm not sure what layer things belong to now. Like if this is part of the squirrel's arm layer, or if it's part of the head layer. There's lots of, of little, little differences there. Parts of it are still on the, the feathers. That haziness is maybe part of the arm. Yeah. Try to get those internal transitions. This is part of the talon. Sharpen that up a bit. Okay, From the head here. Ah, I don't want to be on the paintbrush. This is why it's nice to have the stylus and the uh, the mouse handy. Soft erase out some of these. Bit of a haircut, a little flat looking. Okay. Now I've got the head, I've got the body, got most of the adjustments I want. Though I keep questioning. Yeah, I think I'm gonna change that hairdo a little bit more, just like that. Okay, now I've got the head, I've got the body, I've got the adjustments I want. I go to my very top layer, which just happens to be this head. And I'm gonna turn off my background. And I've already turned off my sketch, so it's just empty, empty grid. And we haven't done this since we did the, the line art jumble in the beginning of the class but I'm gonna hold down option and then go to layer, merge visible. And what that does, and I can turn off every other layer, every other group. What that does is it merges everything into one, one layer, which is incredibly helpful because now I can just dodge, burn, and clean up the edges on just this one layer. Sometimes that's easy, Sometimes it's incredibly burdensome. It depends what your edges are like. 
So I will start by getting all this soft gray stuff with my contiguous magic wand. And I wish that I could use the magic wand in a way that softened without having to use a clipping mask, but in the new versions of Photoshop, it requires you to use a clipping mask under Select and Mask, which I don't love. This used to be Refine Edge instead, which I liked those options a little bit better. But it's okay, we adapt. So the problem with using the magic wand is it will sometimes get rid of things you don't want it to, like right in there. But this is where, and everything's super sharp, right? There's no feather. But this is where I'm gonna go to a 100% eraser. Pretty soft, but not terribly soft, pretty small. And I can just hand cut some of these edges. Things like feathers are just notoriously a pain. Because they're organic, I can always just cut deeper into them and make my own edges. You can see how that three feather softening makes a big difference rather than having that stair-stepped pixel edge. I don't need to worry about moving between layers anymore. It's all here for me. Just going in there and cutting it out. It can be helpful to turn back on your, your gray background because that will show any debris that's kind of left. And ideally, before we move our creature into a new setting with our proving ground, we would have it cleanly cut out like a sticker. So I'm using a 100% eraser. I don't want to leave any little traces. Oops. I might be being a little too picky here because I'm zoomed. Well, zoomed in at 200% is actually a good level. When you zoom in at 200%, you're basically seeing what you'll be able to see with prints. So if it looks kind of pixelated and not too great at 200% zoomed in, you can see that in your bottom left-hand corner, then you want to fix it. But going beyond 200%, you're kind of just being a perfectionist because your eye can't detect that in a printout. So you can see all those bright spots I erased out where they're called undercuts. The background shows through the feathers at the top. I need to remember not to do so much with feathers. Use the magic wand where you can. But always with contiguous turned on. Otherwise, it's going to erase that color on the inside of your creature as well. 
It's also a good chance for you to dodge and burn the entirety. So if I wanted to sharpen up the eye a little bit, I could burn it a little. I could dodge it on the highlight a little. And I can use the sharpen tool a little. Really brighten that up. It's all on the same layer, even though it's composited from a few different sources. You can do that wherever you think it needs it. And I will never expect perfect work. And this will not be perfect when I submit it. But we address what we see and we get better as we go. So what I'll do is I'll cut the edge off with the eraser. And then I'll just use my lasso and grab everything. That's on the outside. Good time to save. I'm going to crop a little bit too, because Photoshop's slowing down on me a little bit. So I'm going to crop to be closer around my creature and save it now that I'm just cutting it out. And I'm running out of time. I need to hurry. Ah. Come on. Try to make holding down shift the best use of this contiguous magic wand as possible. Clear this whole back. you're lucky your animal reference was shot on a blank background and has a lot of nice light and contrast, but we're not always that lucky. That's why they use green screens in studios. I can always just get in there with my lasso, just set to a slight feather. Tail looks good. Just erase directly because this is a softer texture. The fur, the hair. And we'll have opportunities to clean it up around around it when we put it into an environment as well. But right now we just want it pretty sharp and pretty clean. And really, we're going to have lots of opportunities to improve it as we put it into an environment because we'll be adjusting its lighting as a creature, putting shadows underneath it, everything we need to do to make it believable in a space. And that in turn can help improve our assignment. Yeah, for a compositor, a soft edged 100% opaque eraser, nothing beats it. And it's, I'm only viewing it at 50% of its actual pixels. That's 